What is wrong with you, you frickin' psychopath? Why are you blowing up my phone with all these calls this late at night? I am trying to enjoy a night out at the club with my friends. Are you trying to be a buzzkill again? Look, you're my older sister, whatever, but this is my life. There you are, Jenna. I've been trying to contact you for hours. You need to hurry up and get over to Dad's hospital room. His condition has taken a massive turn for the worst, and he doesn't have much time. Do whatever you need to do. Call a taxi or whatever you have to do. It doesn't matter how you're dressed. Just get down here as fast as you can. Oh my god, is that all you wanted to tell me? He's done this a bunch of times before. He's doing fine, then all of a sudden it looks bad. But then it clears up in a few hours. I'm not wasting my time making a trip to the hospital right now. I can go and see him in the morning if I feel like it. I am exhausted from work today, and I think that I am the one who's going to die from pent-up stress if I don't let loose tonight. Now, if you'll excuse me, these hot guys at the table next to us just ordered us a round of shots, so I'm going to get back to drinking now. You just be a good little girl and watch over dad for me, okay? I don't believe this. You're going to go out drinking rather than see your own father? And where do you get off trying to tell me that you're exhausted from work anyway? You barely even work at all. Ugh, I don't have the time to talk to you about that, though. Dad doesn't have time. This is not like the other times Dad's given us a scare, Megan. This is serious. You need to get down here. You are relentless, you know that? Fine. As soon as we're done drinking the shots those guys bought for us, we'll talk to them for a little while, and then I'll come over. Congratulations, Captain Buzzkill. You have successfully killed my buzz yet again. How long are you going to be talking to them? I'm telling you, Dad does not have much time left. We're not talking weeks or days anymore. We're talking hours at most. What do you want from me? I already said I'm going to go in a little bit. And don't you dare pretend like you love Dad more than me. You're not his real daughter like me. You were adopted. I don't believe you, Megan. How could you bring that up now of all times? That has absolutely nothing to do with anything. It's something I've been wanting to say to you for years. I've just been avoiding it because I'd rather not have that awkward conversation while dad was around, but you've been super obnoxious lately, more so than usual. Plus, once dad's gone, I won't have any reason to deal with you anymore. You won't be my sister. You'll be nothing to me at all. And I'll also admit that those shots I just took may have been what pulled the trigger. (laughs) How could you say that to me? You're drunk. Whatever. I'll talk to you about this another time. (laughs) The shots were just what gave me the courage to finally say what I've always thought about you. No, these feelings are 100% genuine. (laughs) Whether dad dies tonight or not, I was always going to cut ties with you sooner or later. So I figured I might as well get it all out in the open now. (laughs) So it's true then. That really is what you've always thought of me? You should consider yourself lucky that I've held my tongue for this long. The way you always acted like you were my big sister being all concerned about me. It made me sick. You're not my sister. You were adopted. So stop pretending. For the record, I wasn't pretending. But whatever. I'm not texting you to talk about our sibling relationship. I am texting you because dad is dying. All you need to do is drop what you're doing and get over here. Got it? You're the one that doesn't get it, Jenna. I am nowhere near as drunk as I want to be because of you texting me. I'm going to have one more drink and then go. How is it that I'm the drunk one, but you're the one having difficulty comprehending basic English sentences? Fine, whatever. Have your drink. But the second you finish drinking, call a taxi immediately. Serves you right, you goddamn brat. I hope that teaches you a lesson that you'll never forget. The funeral's over now, so your work is done here. Never show your face around any member of this family ever again. I don't get it, Megan. I thought I understood you, but I guess I don't. So tell me, why did you just punch me in the face in the middle of Dad's funeral? Because my dad picked you up out of the orphanage like you'd pick up a dog from the pound, but you still feel like you deserve to call yourself his daughter? I am done with you now. Disappear, vanish, leave town, whatever. I'm not letting a stray mutt like you get one cent of my inheritance. That money is for his real family, and that doesn't include you. 
You've been saying that to me basically every time you get drunk since the night dad died. But this time you're sober and you did it in front of the entire family. I guess that means you're serious. What was your first clue? <laughs> I wouldn't have punched you if I weren't dead frickin' serious. All right then, I'm leaving. That's what you want, right? That's what I've wanted you to do ever since dad brought you home. And just for the record, I have never even once thought of you as my sister, Jenna. I only ever called you that to make dad happy. He's gone now, so I have no more reason to lie to you or anyone else. Now, if you don't mind, I've got a loving fiance who's patiently awaiting my return. So you can go back to being single at 30 and spending all your time at the office like usual. Oh, you got engaged? I had no idea. Now that I think about it though, weren't you dating one of the guys who worked for a client of ours? That's right, so my future is secure. I'm gonna have a big, happy family with tons of money. Something a forever alone loser like you will never have. Now, never talk to me again. Got it? Yeah, I got it. As you wish, I will never bother you again. I hope you have all the happiness that you deserve. Goodbye, Megan. Hey, what's going on, Jenna? Where are you? Answer your phone! I'm sorry, who is this? Stop screwing around. You know who I am. I'm your freaking sister, you idiot. Sister? Hmm. Sister. No, I'm sorry. That doesn't ring any bells. I don't have a sister. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Very funny. Aren't you clever? Now drop the act and start explaining. Why the hell are you the executor of Dad's estate and his successor at the company? I just showed up to work this morning only to find out that I've been fired. What is the meaning of this? It's like you said, Megan, Dad left me in charge of everything. I was the one who took care of him ever since he got sick, so he trusted me to do right by him. And yes, when he died, he left me in charge of things at his company. I mean, if it weren't for me, nothing would ever get done right around there anyway, so that's only natural. As for you, if you weren't around, well, not much at all would change. You leave early, come in late, take extra breaks, and in general, do as little as possible to collect your paycheck. And now that we've cut off all ties between each other, now I have no reason to hold back from firing you. You have no right to fire me. This is my company. This was my dad's company, and I am his only daughter. Only? I'm his only real daughter. That makes this company mine. Even if I were to hand over the company to you, all I would do is then start up my own company and make it a roaring success. So I could hand over the company to you if I wanted. But there's no way you could handle it as well as I can. <laughs> well, uh, really all you are is a roadblock to the company's success. We're not family anymore, so it's time that you finally did what you should have done a long time ago and disappear. You're not going to get away with half-assing your way to a full-time salary and benefits anymore. You can go and find a company who's willing to hire a complete flunky and work for them. I won't let you get away with this. And hey, if you're the executor of Dad's estate, when am I getting my money? It's all going to me, right? I'm his only daughter. I'm afraid not, Megan. Before he died, Dad talked to me a lot about his regrets, including you. He said that he realized far too late that he had spoiled you. Because of that, you grew up without ever developing a respectful work ethic or financial sense. He knows that since you never had to work for any of your money, you don't understand the value of anything and waste all your money on stupid nonsense. He wants you to support yourself, to go off by yourself and live off your own money. What are you talking about? My dad was filthy, stinking rich, so, so what if I spend however much I want on whatever I want, whenever I want? And besides, I work more than enough already. Do you even know what our company does? It seems like all you do on every project you get assigned to is lower the team's motivation. That, and you end up sleeping with any attractive men at our client firms that you can get your hands on. Did you think I didn't know about that? What? Who told you about that? Give me their name right now. I'm going to tear them a new one. I won't be divulging the names of my sources. And by the way, if you did tear them a new one, the only thing that would happen is you'd get thrown in prison. You're not getting out of this, Megan. It's time for you to work for the first time in your life. No more living off your family members. Okay, for the record, I've only ever spent my own money. What's wrong with that? Oh, is that right? 
That means you must have savings, so it wouldn't be a problem for you to get fired then. Of course it's a problem! This is my dad's company! Give it back! Not gonna happen, Megan. While I may have been adopted, I am no less our dad's daughter. I'm in charge of his estate. If you don't want to take my word for it, you can read his will yourself. It clearly states that you get nothing. I'll send you a copy later this afternoon. I highly recommend that you read the whole thing, too. It might just tell you something about Dad that I'm sure you'll want to know. I don't believe this. I'll figure out some way around that stupid will. But aren't you getting married anyway? I don't see what your problem is. You and your fiancé can support each other through the difficult times. And we will! God, your attitude pisses me off. That's it. I, I can't talk to you anymore. I'm out. I'm gonna go and have the happiest life I could ever ask for with my fiancé. Be my guest. Never contact me again. Do you understand me? Uh, Megan, you're the one who texted me today. Hi, Jenna. I wanted to thank you again for having dinner with me today. It was great to have the chance to talk to you in person. I know a lot of great restaurants in the area that I'd love to take you to. I'll have to invite you out again sometime soon. I'd like that. Thank you too, Kyle. I had a great time. I'm sorry I kept you so long, though. I just had so much fun talking to you that I kind of lost track of time. Nah, you don't need to apologize for anything. It was my pleasure. You had such a fascinating perspective as someone who's running an entire company at such a young age. My company has been a client of yours for quite some time now. I knew your father well. I'll have to admit, I was rather surprised to hear about the circumstances of the leadership change. Yeah, I'm sorry you had to find out this way. But really, I was more shocked to find out that your brother grew up in the same orphanage as I did. I don't think I've ever met anyone else from there since I left. And he's getting married? That's so wonderful to hear. You'll have to tell him congratulations for me. I'll be sure to do that. It was a great experience for me too. To see someone in the same position as my older brother become such a phenomenal success was incredibly inspiring. It makes me think I need to step up my act a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you're doing plenty well for yourself already, Kyle. I hope your brother's wife's family is as understanding of the circumstances of his birth as you are. The truth is, I kind of had a falling out with my sister related to me being adopted recently. And by kind of, I mean, uh, <laughs> she punched me in the face. So I get a bit jealous when I hear of people with more positive family environments. Wait, is that what the bruise on your chin was from? Oh, so you did see it. I guess I didn't do a good enough job covering it up with foundation. I'm sorry you had to see that. No, please don't apologize. I did notice it, but... Well, you know, it's not exactly an easy topic to breach during a business conversation. I'm terribly sorry that happened to you. It's alright. Ever since my dad died, things between me and my sister, his biological daughter, have been... weird. They raised me like their very own, despite me being adopted. And I found out lately that my sister has always been a bit sore about that. But we've cut ties now, and in all honesty, it's a bit of a relief to me. I'll bet it was. Man... I suppose I'll never fully understand the difficulties of being an adopted child. Now that you mention it, I haven't told my fiancé that my older brother was adopted yet. Really? You mean that conversation has never come up before? No, actually. It's always been a fact of life to me. I never thought much of it. But if she's going to be my wife, then she's going to have to accept him. If not, then I wouldn't want anything to do with her. It doesn't matter that we're not related by blood. My brother will always be my brother. Wow, Kyle. You really are a wonderful brother. I wish I could have had as good of a relationship with my sister as you do with your brother. I know it may not be my place to speak to your family matters, but I wouldn't worry too much about your sister if I were you. You're quite the eligible bachelorette. I'm sure you'll meet a wonderful person and build a happy family of your own. <laughs> we'll see about that, I guess. Thanks for everything, Kyle. I feel much better after talking to you. I'm glad I could be of service. You have my number. I'd be happy to hear you out whenever you got worries on your mind. I might just take you up on that. <laughs> but I'm sure you're super busy getting ready for your wedding and everything. Maybe we can have dinner together after all of that has settled down. 
Actually, I'd love to get the chance to talk to your brother. Maybe you could bring both him and your wife along as well? That would be fantastic! I'll talk to him and see what he thinks. Hey, what did you say to Kyle? Thanks to you, he's so pissed off at me that he broke up with me. Yeah, Kyle told me all about it. Now, in my defense, when I talked to Kyle the other day, I didn't know he was your fiancé. I knew that you were dating someone at one of our client companies, but I didn't know anything more specific than that. I can't believe Kyle's older brother was adopted. Not just that, but he was placed in the exact same orphanage as you were? What are the odds of that? I couldn't believe it either when Kyle told me. It was enough of a surprise to hear his older brother was adopted, but when he mentioned the name of the orphanage, I just about fainted. When I first started talking about my history at the orphanage, Kyle got this curious sort of look on his face. He asked me a few questions, and then he got really wide-eyed and said, No way! I'm pretty sure that's the same place my parents adopted my brother from! It was quite shocking for both of us. Well, I am super glad the two of you enjoyed yourselves, but why did you have to go blabbing about that to my fiancé? You told him about how I punched you at Dad's funeral, too, didn't you? If you could have just kept your big, fat, stupid adopted mouth shut, I wouldn't be single again right now. Did you ever even think to ask Kyle about why he broke up with you? He told me everything. I'm sure if you cared to talk with him, he would have told you too. According to him, what really set him off was the fact that you told me that I wasn't your real sister or dad's real daughter. So that alone would have probably been enough for him to kick you to the curb. But then you punched me on top of that? He said that he'd never been so disappointed in a person in his life. I can't believe you told him all of that. You did this on purpose, didn't you? You wanted to get Kyle to break up with me. You just couldn't handle seeing me happy. No, it was actually a total coincidence. I never meant for any of this to happen. I'd been so busy with the transition work into my new position that I didn't have time to talk to any of our client companies about Dad dying. Kyle saw a company email with Dad's name gone and my name in its place and called the company to ask what had happened. He invited me to dinner to introduce himself and we talked about Dad and business for most of the time. Then we delved a bit into our personal lives and that's when he figured out the whole orphanage thing. I had no idea that Kyle was your fiancé when I brought up the time you punched me at Dad's funeral. I was really shocked when he called me later to tell me that he had broken up with you. I don't care about how your conversation happened. All I care about is what you're going to do to fix this. Think about everything you've done to me in the last few weeks. You stole my job, my fiancé, and my inheritance. Not to mention, before he died, you even stole Dad from me. You're wrong, Megan. I didn't do any of that. You did all of that yourself. Don't you realize that? Think about the night when Dad died, Megan. If you would have just come right away when I called you, you would have made it in time to see Dad. But what did you do? You stayed right in that club and drank with those guys you met that night. You didn't get to the hospital until the next morning, and you were so drunk the previous night that you didn't even remember anything that happened. You denied yourself your very last opportunity to speak to your own father so you could get drunk. And you denied Dad his last opportunity to see his daughter in this world. How could you do that? What was I supposed to do? I was having fun. You know, fun, the thing where you laugh and smile and enjoy life. I don't care how much fun you were having. You knew that dad was dying, but you refused to answer your phone. Then when I finally got a hold of you, you decided to keep drinking. If you had called a taxi right then, you would have made it in time. I told dad you were on your way, but do you know what he said to me? You don't have to lie to me, Jenna. I know she's not coming. Shut up! You're to blame for everything! Why did he have to adopt you anyway? He already had a real daughter, me! If not for that, I'd still have Dad's money, Dad's company, and my fiancé. It's not like I wanted things to turn out this way. All I wanted was to have a loving sibling relationship with you. I tried so hard to close the distance between us, but you pushed me away every single time. Meanwhile, I did everything I could to show our parents how grateful I was that they took me in. I did my best to help out wherever I could at Dad's company, and I didn't complain even once about how you treated me. You shouldn't have wasted your time on me. I would never want to get all buddy-buddy with a filthy stray mutt like you. 
I've grown more than accustomed to all the nasty things you've said to me, but how do you think it made Dad feel to hear that kind of talk? He didn't know, though. I was never mean to you around him. He knew, Megan, and it broke his heart. But he still held out hope that we would be able to reconcile. Eventually, though, he realized he wouldn't live to see that day. He told me before he died that if you were to ever change your ways, then you would be entitled to receive your share of his inheritance. He... he did? And you failed the test, Megan. Miserably. So now you get what you wanted. You will never again have to deal with your stray mutt adopted sister. After that, Megan started profusely apologizing and told me she wanted to be a better sister from now on, but I didn't believe a word she said. I knew that it was all just a desperate ploy to try and get some money out of me. The last I heard, she was out on her own somewhere in the city, living in an old apartment and looking for work. I'm not going to concern myself with her situation anymore, though. She can take care of herself from now on.